played the Lester Moose Lodge. That didn't make the list. <laughs> well, let's start off with a song. How about it, everybody? You ready to sing? All right. Let's start off with one that I learned a long time ago from my good buddy, Jerry Adams. Jerry was a pharmacist in Madison County, and uh, he was quite a character. And uh, it was my first band I was ever in when I was a kid. I played fiddle, and Jerry played banjo. And uh, he was just something else. He was always pulling practical jokes on people like, uh, I was trying to think of one. Oh, one time, his uncle would always sit in the back room of the pharmacy. And he was always trying to pull jokes on his uncle. Well, there's only one bathroom back there. And one time, Jerry decided he'd rub the seat with Ben Gay. His uncle didn't come back for a while. Made him mad. That's the kind of person Jerry was, but he taught me this song when I was just a kid. Did I just cut off? There I am. Don't you remember, don't you know Daddy met a man called a Cotton Eye Joe Where did you come from, where did you go Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe Where did you come from, where did you go Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe That's your part, you sing Where did you come from, where did you go Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe Are you ready? Here we go, one, two, here we go Where did you come from, where did you go Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe Where did you come from, where did you go Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe Jerry was a character. We traveled around in a 1978 Ford van with blue glitter finish and black tinted windows. We were the coolest old time band in history. Now, after a couple of years, that old van started to break down. And now, Jerry was kind of a penny pincher too. He was kind of uh, saving with his money. Now, he found out there's a fella in Marshall that would replace the transmission in that sucker, but it's gonna charge him an arm and a leg. Well, his cousin who lived over in Greenville, Tennessee, right across the mountain, said that he'd replace it for about half as much as that. Now that van, the transmission had went out and it would only go in reverse. And Jerry backed that van from Marshall, North Carolina, all the way across the mountain to Greenville, Tennessee. That's true. On top, when he got to the top of the White Top Mountain up there, there's a state trooper sitting at the line had heard about him back in that van. Somehow he pulled him over. Jerry backed up into there. And he pulled him over. He said, Sir, what do you think you're doing? And Jerry said, Well, I'm just going over to Greenville. And that state trooper said, Going? He said, I couldn't tell whether he was coming or going. So let's sing one last one for my friend Jerry. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Got that joke. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Got that joke. Good singing, you guys. How many Baptists we got? Raise your hand. Good gracious alive. Well, I grew up in a missionary Baptist church, but in Madison County, you can't throw a rock without hitting a Baptist. 
And uh, we were missionary Baptists. We had Southern Baptists, Free Will Baptists, Regular Baptists, Standard Baptists, Primitive Baptists, Plain Baptists, Plain Primitive, Standard Baptists, American Standard Baptists, Deep Water Baptists, Foot Washing Baptists, Snake Handling Baptists, and what my granddad called Buzzard Baptists. <laughs> now, that's a Baptist who only goes to church when somebody dies. <laughs> and even then, they only circle around it, according to him. So I grew up in a pretty religious family. Now my dad's side of the family, they were all the moonshine makers, and they were all the banjo pickers and the fiddle players, you know. And now they believed in religion too, they just had a little bit of a different view, you know, like Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy was from over where my dad's people was from, over in Sodom, North Carolina. That is a real place. There ain't no Gamar, just a Sodom. And uh, Uncle Jimmy, you go to his house, and he loved to talk about the Bible. And he would tell the stories kind of in his own way, you know. I was over there one time, and of course we got on top of the Bible. We got on the miracles of Jesus. I said, well, Jimmy, what's your favorite miracle Jesus ever performed? He said, the whole way Jesus. Got to be at water to wine. <laughs> I said, Jimmy, you make wine all the time. He said, yeah, but Jesus did it instantly. It takes me a couple weeks. <laughs> As opposed to my mom's side of the family who were staunch Baptists. They believed in the Word exactly like it was written in that book. And I'll never forget when I picked up that thing right there, that fiddle. My great uncle, he told me, he said, boy, you better lay that fiddle down. He said, that don't lead to nothing but a bunch of drinking and a fighting. And worst of all, dancing. He said, the devil lives in that field. That's a devil's play box. The devil lives in that thing. I went to my great aunt. I said, he told me that the devil lived in the field. She said, oh, God. He's crashing the way. Devil don't live in the field. Lives in the fiddler. <laughs> It didn't stop me, and I kept playing. <laughs> school year. It was the first day of school. Now, I was going into the fifth grade, and my sister, she's going into the first grade. And uh, as I told you yesterday, my sister was the loud one, and I was the golden one. Now, my sister didn't have a filter between her brain and her mouth. Do you know somebody like that? Right there. You're proud of it, aren't you? We got some people looking at each other. They need somebody like that. Well, my sister didn't have a filter between her brain and her mouth, and of course she was just loud as all get out. Well, that morning she couldn't get her hair fixed, and she couldn't get her clothes right, and there's nothing to wear. I can't find nothing to wear. My hair won't do anything. Mama, 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 mama. And of course, our response to my sister was my mother either yelling or just going like this. Well, I guess y'all will be late. Well, the phone rang. 
And my mom got on the phone, and my sister's still yelling in the background, and I heard my mom say, Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they love that. They, oh, yeah, they love that. Well, my mom gets off the phone, she hangs it up. She says, She said, Kids, now I want you to just, Sarah, just hush up. Josh, go get your book back. She said, Your Uncle Michael's going to come pick you up. Well, my sister went, Oh, no. Because my uncle drove a lime green pinto. <laughs> That sucker was a two-tone. It was lime green and rustic brown, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and it was always breaking down. It, I don't know how many times it broke down while we was on the way to school. Mom would end up having to come pick us up. So we was just, you know, my sister said, I guess it'll just break down again like it always does. We don't have to take it to school anyway. And my mom said, just wait and see. Wait. We made our way out the door and we went up to the top of the driveway. We were waiting on my uncle. Now, you could hear that car about a mile away. You know, it kind of made... <laughs> kind of sound. <laughs> well, we stood there for a while, but we heard something coming, but it didn't sound like that. It sounded like... <laughs> and all of a sudden, my uncle pulls up in a brand spanking new Monte Carlo. That sucker was shiny black. It had two red racing stripes down the side of that sucker. Woo! It was a fine mobile. My sister said, Who's that? And all of a sudden, my uncle rolls down the window. He didn't even have to go over there and turn anything. It just rolled down on its own. And my sister said, How much did this cost? And my uncle just went, get in. Well, my sister just pushes me out of the way and gets right in the front seat, and I'm left with the back. Well, we all get settled in there, and my sister just looking at me, well, this is a fine car. I bet this cost you a lot. How did you get this much money? And of course, he's just shaking his head. All of a sudden, she starts messing around with knobs and buttons. You know, and she's rolling the wind up and down. Right there, there's a radio that's there, and all you have to do is press a button, and it comes on. You didn't have to turn it or anything. You just press the button, and on it comes. And she was fiddling with them knobs right here, and she said, This car ain't no good. And my uncle said, What are you talking about? It's brand new. She said, It ain't no good. Papa said, A vehicle without a CB radio ain't no good. Your car ain't no good. Because, of course, my granddad had a CB radio in every vehicle he owned, and we all had our own monikers, you know. I was a little raccoon hunter because I loved to go hunting, you know, and my grandmother was morning glory, and Papa was coal hauler. We all had our little names, but my sister said, it ain't no good. I don't like it. Don't have a CB radio. Papa would like it. It ain't no good. And my uncle just said, buckle up and let's go. Well, we set off down the road. Well, as we was riding along the road, there's two straight places on Big Pine where you can kind of get a little speed. Well, we got to the flats of Big Pine. And my uncle just floored that sucker. And we were just posted to the back of our seat just like this right here. And my sister was screaming, Ah, slow down! I'm telling mama! <laughs> well, me and my uncle was just laughing, carrying on. We was having the best time in the world. We ran around another few curves, and there was Paul Randall's. Now, Paul Randall lived right at the end of another big straight. And so my uncle said, let's just hop this sucker up and see what she'll do. And all of a sudden, he did. He kicked that sucker in high gear. Wham! And we were in the back. My sister screamed, ah, tell him, mama, tell him, mama. All of a sudden, ah, we were pushed forward. Because right there in the middle of the road was M.C. M.C. was an old Jaime Mountain man. He had old faded work boots that had creases in them. He wore corner brand overalls, probably the same pair he had had for 40 years. He had a bald spot right here in front of his head, but his hair stuck up like Einstein's in the back. <laughs> he had a pocket right here in the front where he kept his backer and his money. Now, for those of you from off, backer is tobacco, okay? Where he kept his backer and his money right there. And in his arms, he held his most prized possession, his cat. Now, the cat's name was Lieutenant Chuckles. I'm not making this up. That was the cat's name. The cat, it was the color of melted sherbet 
like just rolled in dirt. That's what Lieutenant Chuckles looked like. And Lieutenant Lieutenant Chuckles would even talk. I mean, he could talk to Lieutenant Chuckles, and Lieutenant Chuckles would just back. Now, MC comes up to the car. He comes up right over to the passenger side. My uncle rolls that window down. He says, "Good luck." I heard my headphone go. Could I get me a ride to Marshall? Now we've given MC a ride to Marshall quite a bit. Now you got to understand that my uncle called it our Christian duty to help take people to Marshall because a lot of people didn't have a car and MC didn't have a car. Well, my sister got out and she came in the back and we both sat in the back seat and MC got in the front. And then he shut the door and we headed off. Now I have to tell you something. MC lived with his mom, who was 95 years old, in an old house that his great granddaddy had built. And it had an old timey stone chimney in it. And I bet that flue hadn't been cleaned out since the 1920s. And MC, every ounce of them Porter Brown overalls were just covered and just seeped with old wood smoke. It smelled like the 4th of July in Marshall after the fireworks had been set off. And I have to tell you, I love going to the 4th of July fireworks in Marshall because Duke Chantley's the one who set them off. I got to go up there and watch them one time. He smoked lucky strikes with no filter, and that's what he set off the fireworks with. Anyway, that's a side note. <laughs> but all of a sudden, we're in the back seat, and that smell just starts to develop. And that smell just gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And all of a sudden, my sister just yells out, Somebody stinks! <laughs> and my uncle just looks in the room. Somebody needs a bath! And then I was like, shut up, shut up. And my sister then goes, I think it's MC. <laughs> smell like smoke. And just, we're trying to get my sister to shut up. Well, we asked him to see where he wanted to go. He said, well, oh, me and Lieutenant Chuckles are going to head to Marshall. We need to get Mommy some tobacco. Because his mother, she chewed Kentucky Twist and Dimble Snuff mixed together. Had all of her entire life, and he went down to Marshall to get that for her. Well, we was riding along in the car, and the smell just kept getting worse and worse. And I kind of started hunkering down because, you know, they tell you, if you're ever in a fire... You got to get your nose to the lowest spot. So I'm just in the back. My sister's got her shirt over her nose like this, just holding her nose like this, you know. And we're all sitting there, and my uncle just very, just carefully kind of rolls each of the windows down just a little bit to kind of get the air flowing there. And kind of MC just gives him a look right here. And all of a sudden, Chuckles just sneezes. Chuckles goes, he said, uh, Lieutenant Chuckles is going to catch a cold rolling windows up. So there we were again. Windows rolled up there with MC and Chuckles. Well, MC started fiddling around with the knobs in the car. He said, this is a mighty fine car right here. He opened up the glove box. He messed around with that window a minute or two and got back up there and he looked at the radio. And he started turning the knobs. And he was turning, you know, like the volume knob and everything. And all of a sudden, he clicks the button for the power switch. Well, before he clicked the button, he'd already turned the knob all the way to the top of that volume knob. And all of a sudden, on the radio, I love the tiger, da -da -da, and Chuckles escapes. And Chuckles starts making circles around that car. And there my sister's just screaming, Ah, somebody get Chuckles! Ah, somebody get Chuckles! And we're all grabbing and pleading. All of a sudden, my uncle rolls down the window, and Chuckles just jumps out the car. He yanked over the car. And all of a sudden, we're over there trying to hunt for Chuckles. Well, finally, MC gets him. And my sister, as we're heading back to the car, she's all scratched up. She said, Chuckles smells as bad as he does. <laughs> and MC gives her a look. He said, that's Lieutenant Chuckles to you. <laughs> well, we made our way on, and before you get to Marshall, you have to come to the Walnut Cash and Carry. Now, the Walnut Cash and Carry is where you get all kind of your grocery goods. And, you know, Mr. R.L. Park had all kinds of cool stuff in there. And when you got to the grocery store right there, the Walnut Cash and Carry, the road split in two. And the store was right in the middle of that split. So we pulled up right there in front of the Walnut Cash and Carry. We got out. And uh, we went inside. And for some reason, right there in the front, he always had fireworks on display for any part. I and mean, they've been there for, I don't know, 10, 20 years, just sitting right in the front as a display. And I was just kind of mesmerized by it. We went to the back, and me and my sister got ourselves an RC Cola. 
and we went to the front, my uncle also bought us a cow tail. Don't you love them? Those caramel things with the vanilla in the middle. So we would drink our Sukkot and have them have them cow tails. And we went out to the car and we was excited. There's nothing old. The smell of MC, that wasn't going to bother us. We were just so happy to get that. MC comes out and he had something you could tell in his hand. And we got back in the car. Well, of course, windows got rolled up. We headed to Marshall and the smell started getting worse and worse and worse again. And all of a sudden, I heard a... And MC had bought a can of tuna for chocolates <laughs> and had opened it up in that smoke permeated car. To this day, I cannot eat smoked fish. That's the truth. Well, we took him to Marshall, and there were several instances where we got to take MC to Marshall. And uh, I'll never forget, finally, he stopped asking for a ride, and I never could figure out why. We hadn't picked him up in probably a couple months. And we loved to ride with my uncle in that fine car, and we kept riding with him just about every morning he'd take us to school. Well, we opened her up down there at Paul Randall's, that straight. We just up the gas pedal to the metal, and we opened her up, and all of a sudden, boom, we just stopped dead because there was a whole line of cars. And in front of that line of cars was MC on a liquor sickle. Now, I don't know if you know what a liquor sickle is, but that's what we call a moped. Because if you get a DUI, that's all you can drive, and we call it a liquor sickle. <laughs> and on the back of that liquor sickle was a little cage, and he had Lieutenant Chuckles in that cage, and that cat was just in there, just making circles like his driver, and he was driving right dead center in the middle of the road. Right dead center, between the yellow lines, holding up all the cars. But the time we got all the way to R.L. Clark's at the Walnut Cash and Carry, the sheriff was already there to stop him. And he stopped him, and all the cars went by, and we kind of stopped there just to see what was going on. And the sheriff said, MC, what in the world are you doing? You can't ride in the middle of the road like that. And MC said, oh, well, I figured that that lane over there was for the big cars, and that lane over there was for the big cars, and that little in the middle was for me. <laughs> Several years passed, and my uncle sold that old car. And he got him a brand spanking new Mustang. We got to ride that to school. Well, he could open that sucker up on the flats of Big Pine. He could open that sucker up down there at Paul Reynolds. Oh, I just love riding that vehicle. And we got to Paul Reynolds one morning. And we opened her up one last time. And we had to put on the brakes again. There's a big long line of cars. And I looked in the front of that long line of cars. And there was that black Monte Carlo with the red racing stripes and in the back window of that car was Lieutenant Chuckles pacing back and forth. MC had bought that car. Well, don't you know that we rode like that just slow as smoke all the way till we got right there at R.L. Clark. You remember when I said the road split in two? Well, the road split and MC didn't. He rode right dead center, right into the middle of R.L. Clark's store, the Walnut Cash and Carry. He hit them fireworks. They went off. They went smoke. was just piling everywhere. Lieutenant Chuckles jumped out the window. The car was still rolling through, and it had torn everything up in there while there was cow tails of flying, RC cola bottles of flying, everything else. R.L. Clark was running around the room trying to figure out what was going on. We stopped, and we ran in there just as hard as we could to make sure nobody was hurt. And there stood MC, the Lieutenant Chuckle, safely in his arms. Just smoke billowing everywhere from them fireworks that went off. And he said very wearily, Reckon me and Chuckles could get a ride to Marshall. <laughs> and my sister, without blinking, said, Well, at least we'll be used to the smell. <laughs> <laughs>